Uh, today we're going to talk about how to, how to create cylinders from rectangles and or squares because squares are part of the rectangle family. So whenever we're, we're drawing something like a, like a rectangle or a triangle, anything that's the same on both sides, we can use a center line to draw it. Uh, to check it for the fact that it needs to be symmetrical or the same on both sides. Now I'm going to kind of back my way into that and I'm going to show you how to there's a, a video where we talk a little bit about what's called um, armature of the rectangle and that's basically how we can uh, find the middle of any rectangle. So when I'm making this rectangle I want to make sure as much as possible that it meets each line at 90 degrees okay that those lines are as straight as possible and that these two lines meet at a true corner or at 90 degrees or as close as we can this is a little symbol that looks like a little square to say that that's a true corner or 90 degrees. We would also, you know, say perpendicular. That's the correct term to indicate that it's 90 degrees at that corner. So if we've got a rectangle, we have two sets of parallel lines that are supposed to meet at 90 degrees. Now, if I was having, if I if I needed to straighten these lines out after I've drawn them by hand, I could go ahead and, and get a, you know, a straight edge of some sort or use a drafting triangle or what have you. But the idea is we're going to start with this rectangle. Once we have the rectangle, we're going to take the four corners of this rectangle and we're going to go ahead and make an X inside this rectangle going from one corner with a straight, as straight line as we can to the next corner. Looks like that meandered just a little bit. It's a little better. We're going to go from this corner down to that corner. like so and if we've got those lines straight this right here should be the middle and if I needed to check to see if it is I could take my thumb and the edge of the pencil and I could use it as a measuring device so I can measure from this line to the middle and then I can move my um, pen, thumb here in the middle and my pencil edge so that this distance here and that distance there are pretty much the same and they are and so if they're the same well then we're gonna go ahead and pass a line now sometimes it's easier to start here and come down and then start here and come up it just depends on how comfortable you are with your lines and again after I've done this by hand if I need to straighten this out I again could get a ruler or a uh, drafting, tri dra drafting triangle or something of that nature. Got six lines there, so let's go ahead and find out which line is the one it should be. Okay. So this right through here. This is a center line of this rectangle. So this line passes through the center. And wherever, and I just, I mentioned before, whenever we're drawing something like a triangle or anything, a bottle or an apple or anything that has symmetry, we can use a center line. And in fact, I think I said a triangle and, and look what we got here. We got, we got a triangle happening there. So, 
this right here is this this rectangle now it, it's um thing to understand that the rectangle is a 2d shape and you probably all understand that uh, but if I take a 3d shape like a cylinder and I flatten it out into a 2d shape it becomes a rectangle so it actually makes sense to to create a cylinder from a rectangle because a rectangle could be a cylinder if it became 3d we're gonna change this from a flat shape into a 3d shape now these edges that we've got here these corners you should have already watched the uh, ellipse uh, videos uh, this would be the length of the major axis the minor axis is through the middle and 90 degrees and lo and behold what do we have right here so <clears throat> It's good, to, pardon me, it's good to understand that the, that the minor axis is always on the center line. And I could mark off equal distances on that, and then mark off the same distance. We're going to put the same ellipse top and bottom for now. Uh, for anyone who's done a lot of drawing, you might say, well, there, that's not exactly how it should be but we're going to do it that's how we're going to do for today uh, as we get more into drawing and you start learning about perspective and things like that then we start to understand there's there's more to that conversation but to make our ellipse again you should have seen the ellipse uh, video if you haven't check it out we can turn this into a this into a c curve this into a very soft open c curve or an arc turn this into an arc okay and we can do the same thing here, C curve. Now, is this the exact curvature of the, of the ellipse? Most likely not. This is just to get my brain into making sure that this is an ellipse and doesn't become, you know, either pointed like, an, like a stretched almond or flat like a, like a capsule or something. So, it always, so this is, that's all it's supposed to give us is make sure that, that we don't you know straighten it out that this is an ellipse it's always supposed to be turning so yeah this the c curve that i put there is too wide again it's just to get my brain in the idea that i have to bank that curve and i have to round all the way through it and then i make this curve and come through it And now we've actually got a little bit, this ellipse is actually kind of bending out too far. So, all right, that's a little, that's much better. So we can go ahead and darken in our ellipse for our got this uh, pencil that's not quite as sharp as it should be so it picked up the edge. This is actually uh, just a really really dark pencil for the demonstration. Uh, so again we can go ahead and come through here turn that corner and come through there. So we now have our lips on the top and then we just need to go ahead. Now, whenever I draw an ellipse, I draw through the object. So I draw all the way around to the back side for this ellipse. And the reason I do that is because if you don't, people will just come on the bottom and they put a smile on there. And the smile is too flat. So by, by checking all the way through this ellipse, I can see if my ellipse is... Again, symmetrical, and I'm seeing if I'm hooking around through there. Now, this is actually not the same, it looks like. Let me do a quick check. Yeah, that's not. Okay, so that is off. So we're going to go ahead and lift this a little bit. So I'm making sure that it was equal distance here to here, and it wasn't. So we're going to go ahead, and that means that's going to change the hook. As it hooks through that little corner, you know, that, that curve, and then comes out. So again, the reason I do this is by making my, whoops, 
by making that ellipse see that's that's bumping out that's not right there we go that needs to come down and again for the for, there is an, an ellipse template uh, for those in the class that I, that we're gonna have you use to trace through it so you can kind of get the feel for what an ellipse should be but this this ellipse now is doing pretty good so it was bumping out here which was not right so we corrected that it was actually to begin with not quite symmetrical because I didn't measure it when I put on my little mark so I had to remeasure it but now that I've got that right because this is supposed to be the top and I would only see <clears throat> the front side of this well we could go ahead and darken this up like that as the bottom ellipse this then would go up the now the sides of the the um, of this cylinder drop from those major axis points okay so that's where it connects also if I'm doing a uh, a cone or anything with that's round on the bottom the sides are going to connect with the uh, major axis points okay So right, right there we have we have a cylinder. So this would be the top of the cylinder here, right? And this would be the side. And now that we did all that, we could clean this up. We could, you know, erase and, and lighten these up or what have you. Because we did all that just to make sure that we have a nice symmetrical cylinder. <clears throat> a good looking cylinder, that's all we were doing. Is trying to get this cylinder to to be nice and clean and fairly symmetrical and all that sort of stuff now I can also do you know if we you know we did one standing up what if we did one on its side so again we could take and start with again that rectangle uh, Start again with this, this rectangle over here. Now I'm drawing a little flat, so it's, I'm drawing a little in perspective. And so it's, it's you never want to draw flat. I'm doing this just for the demonstration because it's a little easier to shoot it this way. But I am drawing a little in perspective. So there's going to be some, sometimes some distortion to the angles or the line isn't as straight as I think it is and then I actually kind of pull up towards me so I actually see it and put it on a sort of a drafting table and I go oh wow so bear with me I guess uh, and so we, we never want to draw flat so even though I'm doing it in this video don't ever do it because you get where your drawings aren't so good because you're literally, literally drawing uh, things that you cannot perceive I mean you can a little bit but not very they'll be out you'll be like oh they look fine and then you you get them over there and you're like oh wow no they're not uh, because again you're you're drawing in distortion essentially I'm drawing in perspective so what I'm perceiving is straight it may seem straight but then I take it out of perspective put it on a drafting table so that it's at the same angle as my eyes are looking and all of a sudden all distortion become distortion becomes very apparent where it's not apparent as I'm doing it all that means is that whenever you draw don't draw flat draw on an angle uh, usually we'll have you get a, a 24 inch by 24 inch or close to it you don't want it smaller than that a drawing board so you can put the drawing board on your knees Leading and lean it against the table and you have a makeshift drafting table and that way you'll be able to see what you're drawing so again we've got our little rectangle these are supposed to be two sets 
of parallel lines meeting at, at true corners or 90 degrees. Um, that's how we're starting this out. So we've got you know these little angles like this, 90 degrees, this is 90. They should all four be 90 degrees. Um, so this is our starting point. Once we do that, we've got our four corners. Now this is supposed to be a cylinder sitting on the side. So we're gonna have our ellipses standing up vertically. But again, to find the middle, we're gonna go from this corner to that corner. And maybe I should make this darker so you can see what I'm doing. We're creating X marks the spot. And let's see if we can do this. I'm a lefty and then trying to get out of, out of your way so you can see what I'm doing. And so we're just going to go from this corner at the top right down to this corner at the bottom left. And where those two lines cross, this right here, as long as the lines are fairly straight, that should be pretty close to the middle. And if I wanted to make sure it was in the middle, like again, I could measure it um, with could measure it with my pencil. Another way of measuring it is I could take a uh, spare piece of paper. Let's say I had a spare piece of paper like so, and I could just mark it. I could just say, "Hey, I just want to make sure, you know, that this actually is in the exact center," and so I could mark the middle there the line there, and I could see if this is the same. Pretty close. Uh, if I was really worried about drawing the horizontal line, I could give myself another couple places. This is the halfway uh, distance, so I could go ahead and mark it here and here, and that way I got three points that I could, I could use if I was worried about being able to keep this line straight. And then we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna go through the middle to these dots and that's the center line again to make this work we really we need that center line so there's our center line right there and again if I was really curious about making sure that my ellipses were the same I again I could take you know mark the middle Mark the outside to where I'm going to make the, the, the little mark there. Bring it over here. And just make sure very quickly, unlike the other one where I didn't really check this, I actually know for a fact now that these are all equally distant from this center point because this is the center point of our ellipse right there. And then we have the major, the major axis here. That's the minor axis, major axis, minor axis, the major being the long one, the minor being the shorter one, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and say, all right, well, we're gonna go ahead and create a C curve, a C curve, uh, a very open C curve or an arc, a very open C curve and an arc. And let's say we're actually gonna see this side of it and this side will be the bottom, so, we're going to start off with drawing the full ellipses, but then we're going to we're going to see one side that's like this is the top and that's the bottom, so I can't see behind it. But we're still going to draw through it so that we can do a better ellipse, and then we just erase away part of the lips that we're not going to do. C curve, C curve, open C curve, open C curve, and again, this is just to get my brain ready to do curves. That's the reason we're doing this. Is our brain goes, yeah, I need to curve it. Oh, by the way, I need to curve it. Oh yeah, I don't know if you remember, but you're supposed to curve it. So that's what this is for. It's to help us remember to, to bank the curve. So again, this C curve that I put on there is way too far open. I need to, It needs to be tighter. So again, it's not to, to make the exact curve I need. It's just to get my brain to think, oh yeah, we got, I got a curve through there. Oh yeah, I got, I, that's right, I got to curve it. Oh yeah, by the way, curve it. Oh yeah, you know, it's, it's really just to get our brain in the, in the idea of doing it. Uh, don't mean for it to sound uh, so uh, perhaps a little <laughs> irritating hearing, hearing that over and over again like that. But that's that's really what's doing for our brain is to help us to, to pick up on what we should be doing and to help us do it better. Um, and so again, we can go ahead and you can watch the quadrants as uh, sort of a, as you're drawing it. 
out of the corner of your eye to make sure that you have a ellipse drawn that is indeed symmetrical. Again, I drew through the back so that I can make sure that I'm hooking through here correctly. And then once I've done that, and if I'm satisfied with my ellipse, and if I don't need to change it, well then we go, okay, well, let's go ahead and darken this up. So we'll just go ahead and darken the curve where it curves to that point, where it comes now. This is gonna be just the front edge that I see because this is gonna be the side that's further away from me where I can't see um, around it. So we're gonna erase the back of this ellipse, probably gonna lighten this up a little bit. Um, in fact, if this was you know, something I was drawing, I'd, I would erase everything so that no one knew how I did it. And so that's the bottom, you know, the, the part I can't see, the bottom is going back that way. And this is the side I can see, both the, the front and the back of the ellipse. And that's important to understand that this is, you know, that I've got, I'm going to have a view where I can see the ellipse, all of the ellipse, and then I'm going to have another part where I can't see all the ellipse at all. Um, and there's other, there's other, so there's, and once you get into perspective, you can start to have some, some, you know, idiosyncrasies where you're like, well, there's, there's a view where you wouldn't be able to see either one of the, the tops or, you know, all the ellipse, the backward, uh, or the back and the front of the ellipse on either side. And, and that's true, but it's, it's, it's a, it's only one specific view that you'd have to really set up to, to be able to see it like that. So we're not going to really worry about it so much because. We're not. We're just trying to talk about the basic way to create an ellipse. So, anyways, this is how we uh, create an ellipse, and uh, we're going to go ahead and this will be um, again. We got the major minor axis we used to create it uh, at the top of the rectangle using the center line, and uh, this is how we will again create. Uh, cylinders using this technique. Um, now, if uh, once you get used to it, well, then you could go, okay, well, what if I can, you know, if you have a really good eye, uh, I, you could go ahead and go, well, I'm going to put this here, and where's my center line, and I'm going to center the other, uh, you know, the other ellipse, and then I'll just, you know, keep those in mind and connect, connect those like so. Well, that's great. You you jumped, you know, you you you're you, you know you're you're jumping through steps because you understand how to do it. And so you can still do it and, and just go right on into the next step um, and then start modifying this if this was some sort of a, you know, we'll talk about construction drawing and things like that. And so you can just keep on, uh, you know, you just modify it as needed. But this is the idea that we're thinking about whenever we're drawing ellipses, whether we're drawing it very formally and breaking it down or whether we're just kind of jumping into it and just kind of uh, you know, drawing uh, an ellipse. And notice I still use, when, again, we always use a center line whenever possible. So while I was drawing this, I had a center line there. I've got, this pencil's kind of dull, so it keeps picking up different lines. So it looks like there's, there, there's like eight lines there uh, from only having to draw on like two or three times over it. But this is how we're gonna deal with creating a, a cylinder on a rectangle we just basically it's a rectangle with two ellipses on the on the top and bottom and boom we've got ourselves a cylinder so that's how you're going to do it i want you to uh if you're in the class i want you to go ahead and draw at least three of these and uh and, and, and get very comfortable if you're if you're not you know uh, if you like if you want to go the extra mile draw draw six of them uh, but get very used to taking a rectangle and modifying it into a cylinder. It's the easiest way to do it, especially if you're leaning stuff, because it's very easy. Um, it's very easy to go ahead and make a rectangle. You know, once you're used to making rectangles, and we, we do that a lot in this class, well, now that I've got the rectangle, then I could just go ahead and put the ellipse on there, right? And then, you know, make the cylinder. So, that's the idea that by using the rectangle, we can go ahead and lean that rectangle whichever way we want and, and you know, to, to then turn it into a cylinder. So that's the idea. Start with something simple and then make it something more, uh, you know, much more advanced. And uh, 
that's that's how we're going to work in the class and it's a really good way of working uh, not just basic drawing but intermediate drawing even advanced drawing if you can construct and understand and see what what the next steps are uh, that's 90 percent of the battle right there so yeah go ahead and give this a shot uh, like i said do either three to six of them um, we'll, we'll have you do these with warm-ups too once you get used to them but this is the basic idea of drawing cylinders and we're going to use these in all kinds of ways and you use them in all kinds of ways again for basic drawing advanced drawing uh, you know intermediate drawing and professional drawing and you name it at any level this is really really important to understand how to do it and uh, so yeah have fun with it uh, you know go ahead and do the assignment. Uh, this has been Kevin McCain with Idaho Art Classes and Kevin McCain Studios. Uh, I hope you'll be more creative. Again, this, this fundamental three-dimensional shape is more important than what we normally give it when we first start to draw. And I know I certainly didn't give it enough importance, but the more I drew, and now I've been a professional for you know over you know a couple decades, it's just something that is the better you can do it, the better you, you can do it, any, everything else, essentially. So you all have a good day. Thank you again. Have a good one. Bye-bye now.